Before we blast off to the past, I have noticed that 37% of you are not subscribed to this channel. So please, if you are not subscribed to this channel, and you watch every upload that I upload, please consider subscribing. We're on the road to 900 subscribers, and you subscribing would help me a lot. Thanks. Enjoy as we take a tour of the past. we're going to be talking about is Ring Around the Rosie. Ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. Time is regards to the Great Plague from the Middle Ages in Europe. It was published in 1881. One's going to be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Twinkle Twinkle Little star how i wonder what you are up above a world so high like a diamond in the sky twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you twinkle are twinkle little star means in 1806 politicians thought they were above typical people they thought they were more powerful than the average people this was published in 1806 The next nursery rhyme I'm going to be doing is Wheels on the Bus. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round, all through the town. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 all through the town. The nursery rhyme means... The wheels on the bus, they represent the never-ending karmic cycle of life, which the vehicle carries us from birth to death, where we are born and reborn. It was published in 1939. The next nursery is going to be Incy Wincy Spider. Incy Wincy Spider, climb up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. In the incy wincy spider, climb out the spout again. This was published in 1910. Nursery rhyme means the spider represents the lower class struggling to make its way in society. The water spout represents the, the myth of the American dream. The rain represents the upper class hindering the poor progress of the lower class. The sun represents the false hope given to the lower class, keeping them from achieving their goal. Cersei rhyme will be Old MacDonald had a farm. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a cow, E-I-E-I-O. With a moo moo there and a moo moo there, here a moo and a moo moo everywhere. Old MacDonald had a farm. E I E I O. This nursery rhyme means the E I E I O represents the enforce and or execution of the I O. The farmer's name wasn't MacDonald, it was Old MacDonald, pu published in 1917. This nursery rhyme will be five monkeys jumping on the bed. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed. This was, this has no publishing. Nursery rhyme has no meaning. But it has one meaning. It has to teach children no jumping on the bed and falling off their beds. Moving on to fairy tales. The first one will be Jack and the Beanstalk. Long ago, there lived a poor woman and her son Jack. They had no money and no food, so the woman decided Jack must take their cow into town and sell it. On the road, Jack met a strange old man who asked to buy the cow. 
The man offered Jack five magic beans for her, and Jack agreed, thinking that's quite a, a baron. When Jack told his mother about the good trade he had made, she said, You foolish boy, now we must go hungry, and threw the beans out the window. The next morning, Jack awoke to find a giant beanstalk growing where the beans had fallen. It was so tall it grew to the sky. Jack climbed right up the beanstalk until he reached the clouds. There before him, he saw a huge castle. Jack walked up to the castle door. There, and the beanstalk has no true meaning, but it is about a poor country boy who trades a cow for a handful of magic beans, where it grows into an enormous beanstalk. Jack climbs it in the clouds and finds an unfriendly giant. It was Fairy tale will be the ugly duckling. One fine day in May, a duck sitting on her nest felt something move underneath her. Her eggs were hatching. One by one, her ducklings broke through their eggshells. And then, each one was yellower and fluffier than the one before. Finally, the last egg cracked open. The duckling that came out was large and clumsy and dirty gray color. He did not look like the other ducklings at all. The mother duck, though, how big and ugly he is. I wonder if he's a turkey chick. But she loved him just the same. And when she led her babies to the pond, the ugly duckling swam just as well as the rest. She knew that he could not be a turkey. The next day, the proud mama took her babies home to the farmyard for the first time. This nursery rhyme truly means? The term ugly duckling means someone that looks plain in first appearance, but turns out to be beautiful. A mother duck laid her eggs. Others hatched out just fine. As soon as the last egg hatched out, it looked different than the others. He swam better than the others. He escaped and found places to live such as an old woman's warm hut, but it turned out in the end that he was a swan born in a duck's nest. This was published in 1843. The fairy tale is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. There was once a family of three bears, a great big papa and a middle-sized mama bear, and a wee little baby bear. The bears lived in a neat little house right in the middle of a forest. Every day stared just as the same way. They sat down and they had breakfast of hot porridge. One sunny Sunday morning, Mama Bear spooned the porridge into the three bowls. It's too hot, squeaked the baby bear, tasting the porridge in his wee little bowl. Ouch! We need to let it cool off growled the papa bear after he tried the porridge in his big bowl. So the three bears decided to go for a walk while their hot breakfast was being cool. This fairy tale has three versions that exist and this is about three bears sat and ate their breakfast when they took a bite and they realized it was too hot. They went for a walk and then Goldilocks walked in and wanted to bite and eat it while it was too hot. She wanted to rest but the little bed was just right. The bears walked back into their house. Being messed up, they went upstairs to see Goldilocks sleeping in their little bed. When she was noticed, she ran as fast as she could, and the bears never saw her again. This was published in 1837. fairy tale we're going to be talking about is the Little Red Riding Hood. A long time ago, there was a great forest. A little girl lived with her mother in a tiny village at the edge of the forest. The girl's grandmother loved her more than her kittens. Love mischief had made her a beautiful red velvet riding cloak. The girl wore the hooded cloak all the time, so she came to be called Little Red Riding Hood. One day, 
Riding, Little Red Riding Hood's mother asked her to take a basket of food to her grandmother, who was sick. Little Red Riding Hood set out right away. She promised to go straight to her grandmother's. Through the grandmother's house was a deep f in the forest. Little Red Riding Hood knew which path to take. She was not a bit afraid to walk by herself. She was not even afraid when she met the wolf that day. This was published in the late 1600s. It has really no meaning. Riding Hood's mother asked her to take a basket of goods to her grandmother, who lived far in the woods. While the child was walking around the woods, she encountered a wolf who wanted to eat her. The wolf wanted her, went to her grandmother's and disguised as her grandmother. Riding Hood went and noticed that her grandmother looked different. Then she noticed it was the wolf. She ran on as fast as she could. She yelled for help when the huntsman heard and shot the wolf. This was published in the late 1600s. fairy tale we're going to be talking about is Hansel and Gretel. Long ago, a poor woodcutter lived on the edge of a large forest with his wife and two children named Hansel and Gretel. One autumn, there was no food in the land. The man couldn't feed his family. The woodcutter's wife, who was the children's stepmother, warned that the whole family would soon die of hunger. One night, she told her husband that she must take the children and leave into the woods, and leave them there. But Hansel overheard this, then he told Gretel. The children were both very frightened. Hansel made a plan later that night. When the moon was high, the boy sneaked out and gathered as many white pebbles as his pocket, pocket could hold. The next day, the children went to with their father to gather wood. As they walked into the wood, Hansel secretly dropped pebbles to mark the path. This fairy tale was about a story about the Great Famine of 1314, where a mother killed her two children and ate them. This tragedy led to the story of Hansel and Gretel, where two children went to a gingerbread house and was kidnapped by a witch. She fattened them up so she could put them in the oven. They jumped out of the window and their parents were happy to see them again. They lived the rest of their, their days with the witch's gold. This was published in 1812. The first fairy tale we're going to be talking about today in this video is the three little pigs. There was once three little pigs who decided to build themselves a house. The first pig met a man with a bungle of straw. The pig asked for some straw and built his house from it. Soon a wolf came along and knocked on the door saying, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. The pig answered, Not by my hair on my chinny chin chin. So that big bad wolf huffed and puffed until he blew the straw house down. The second pig met a man with a load of sticks. The pig decided to make his house out of sticks. Along came a wolf knocking on the door saying, Little pig, little pig, let me in. But the second pig answered, Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. So the big bad wolf huffed and puffed and he blew the house down. Thank you for listening to all of the fairy tales and nursery rhymes in this video. This last fairy tale does not have a meaning to it. It's just a story. This was about three pigs wanting to build three houses. When they encountered a wolf, the pigs built a house with the materials which the wolf blown has blown down. The next one was blown down as well. The next one, the three pigs lived and the wolf couldn't blow it down. He tried as much as he could. The pigs threw a boiling water at the chimney, and there was no more Big Bad Wolf blowing any more houses down. This was published in 1890. Thank you for watching all of this 